Hello friends, who's ready for fall? Well, we're not having fall weather in Texas, not anywhere near it, and we usually even don't, but we're gonna make some fall DIYs. How about this little cutie for your front door? Let's get started. We are gonna start with this old piece of wood that came out of my cousin's house when she did a remodel. I've done some DIYs with it before, so it may look familiar. I'm just gonna give it a quick little sand to knock off the dust, and then I'm gonna use a little bit of cleaner on a rag to wipe it down. Now I'm gonna take some burlap that I had in my stash, and I'm gonna cut some little four inch squares. And we're gonna use the letters F-A-L-L -L and make this little sign into a cute little porch leaner or you could put a string on it and hang it if you wanted to so I'm just gonna use my little tape measure real quick use my pencil whatever I have to do to make these four inch squares now I know some people just tear these and rip them and I've never had much luck doing that because mine are never really straight to begin with and I've just never gotten the hang of that so this is how I do it everybody does it the way that they do it. I use my little iron press um, to smooth out the wrinkles. Now, I made some stencils on my Cricut. I might have made them a little bit big for my four inch squares, but I make it work. So there, see, it was not right. So I take it off and then I end up flipping my stencil over and laying my burlap on the back so I can see where I'm putting it. Genius idea, right? Should have thought of that first. Then I'm just gonna press it down good on my burlap and then gently remove my transfer tape from the burlap. And it takes a little bit because it doesn't really want to stick to the burlap very good. I get this transfer tape on Amazon. It's really good. I can't remember the name of it. I think it's linked in the description box below. I will double check and make sure of that for you. Um, it's not super sticky, so it works really good. I'm going to take Weathered Wood by DIY. It's a kind of a gray brown. I absolutely love this color. I'm going to use a sponge pouncer. And I'm just going to... Pounce, 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 pounce. My little friend's hands. Did you see my friend's hands over there helping me? My friend is in the craft cottage with me today, and we are crafting together. You're going to see her hands a couple times in this video. And I'm just going to fill in all of these little pieces of burlap with the stencils on to spell out the word fall. I'm going to peel it off, and you can see it made it really nice and crisp. I'm so excited. So here are all of the letters done on the burlap, but I really think that they blended in too well. There wasn't enough contrast between the burlap and the wood there. So I had some fabric in my stash. If you've seen any of my fall DIYs before, you've probably seen this fabric. So I cut the squares just a tiny bit bigger than the burlap squares. I just laid the burlap on there and cut around them. And now we're going to glue those burlap letters onto the fabric. I'm going to use a little quick um, tap on quick and thick and I'm going to put it mostly on the paint on the back so it'll have something really good to adhere to. I'm also going to use a little bit of hot glue. This is my new pin hot glue by Zyron. My sure I had two sure bonders that just quit on me at the same time. So I had to get new hot glue guns and you're gonna see them in this video. I'm gonna press that down into the fabric and then I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the corners where the burlap um, doesn't um, stick to it, where it doesn't make connection. Now I took some of that fabric and I ripped strips. I had these left over from a project, so I'm just gonna use them, but I'm showing you that you just snip the end and you just rip it. And I cut this little piece of burlap and I'm just gonna make a messy, messy bow. I'm gonna do this really quickly in fast time, but it's super easy. You just layer those strips however you want to, bunch it up, pinch it up in the middle, and tie it with whatever you want to. You can tie it with a ribbon, you can tie it with a piece of twine, you could do it with a zip tie. I mean, the possibilities are endless. I'm just gonna wrap it around a couple times, tie it again on the back, make a nice little knot, and then I'm gonna put it on the top of that sign. 
and I had, per I'm going to fluff it a little bit first. And then I had purchased last week some of these little burlap flowers at Dollar Tree, and I thought they would be cute little embellishments. And so look how cute they are. And so I decided on these, and they're they have stickers, but I was, I'm not going to trust the stickers. So I'm hot glue it to the middle. Okay, this is my other new hot glue gun, and it has a, a backup. So it has storage. So you, the when you use one glue stick, the other one drops down in there. So you can have backup in there. So we're going to glue that bow to the top. Then we're just going to glue these little fall block letters with some tight bond and some hot glue to our wood. And I'm hoping that this holds up in the Texas heat in the fall. And if it doesn't, I'll just add some more hot glue to it or some more uh, whatever kind of glue I need to put on there. That's the good thing about making your DIYs. If it doesn't hold up, then you just redo it. But if I were selling this, I probably would use something a little more permanent uh, that would stand up to the elements. I glued all four of those down, and then I decided I love this little look where you add the twine to the top or the bottom, and I just tied a knot, and I'm just going to twist it around a few times, tie it on the back, and this DIY is done. This was so easy and so simple, but it's so cute. You could do it in any different colors that you wanted. You could use any kind of different fabric, any kind of different wood. You could paint the wood first. Um, the possibilities are endless. Okay, friends, Ellie Power reached out to me to review this lamp. It is a beautiful lamp. It is sturdy heavy duty. And I'll just tell you right from the beginning, I love this lamp and I would highly recommend it. It has five color temperatures, seven levels of brightness, 35 total lighting choices. And you can choose any of them that will be perfect for whatever you choose. It has a three access arm. It has, so you can adjust it however you need to. It has this really wide LED panel. It has this light that will um, light a 48 inch area. It has this panel that has all of the um, controls. And I love that feature that is that little slide that makes it lighter and darker. And here are your color temperatures. I put the white paper there so you could see um, the different color temperatures. That makes it easier on different people's eyes how you can see. This manual is really nice. It tells you all the different features that it has. It gives you all the instructions that you need in order to make this lamp work efficiently for you. It also has a smart timing and memory function you can set the timer for 20 40 or 60 minutes and then it has a memory function you can set that memory function and then when you come back and you hit that button it will all automatically go to the settings that you had it for the lighting and everything so if you're going to paint you may want your arm to be up like that it would be great for painting and DIYing now if you were going to write or draw you may want your light a little bit closer so you could see detail a little bit more better it would be a great lamp for reading or crocheting or any of those things because you can adjust it to wherever you need it it also is RGO certified and it is not going to have that hazardous light and it's going to protect your eyes from fatigue and it's suitable for using it for a long time whenever you're working or reading. The booklet gives you all the instructions on how to use everything, all of the functions that you need. There I'm telling you about that 20, 40, 60 minute timer. And, and it tells you in there how to use that memory function. I think that is a great feature to have so that you can 
have the same setting every time you sit down to use your lamp. It also has two USB ports. You can charge your devices while you use your lamp. I always love lamps that have those USB ports. I don't know about you. So I'm going to leave the link in the description box to where you can purchase this. It's an Amazon link. Go and check it out. Now on to this next DIY. My friend that's crafting with me today had given me several of these um, signs that they were no longer going to use. And I couldn't get all of that stuff cleaned off. So I just decided we're going to paint over it. So I've taped off the frame with some masking tape. I'm going to use Farm Fresh by DIY. It's a beautiful color. I'm going to do three coats of this, letting each coat dry completely in between. I set it outside in our 100 plus degree weather and it dried really fast. Then I'm going to take weathered wood and I'm going to do just a tiny bit of little dry brushing on it so that it just gives it a little dimension. You know I'm all about that dimension. Um, I get my DIY paints from Sammy at www.unicorndustdesigns.com. She has all your DIY and salt wash paints and a lot of really cool thrift flips. And she is a really um, awesome website. If you'll just go over there, that link will be in the description box as well. Now, I'm just dry brushing this a little bit, like I said, because I want it to have a little bit of dimension. Um, no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing here. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just putting some lines in there and um, dirtying it up a little bit. Then I made a decal on my Cricut. If you don't have a Cricut, you could use stickers. Uh, Dollar Tree has a lot of really cool stickers. I almost picked some up the other day, but you ha sometimes I think I have to pick up several packages so I can have enough letters and I didn't know exactly what I was going to spell so I just decided to use my Cricut instead. So I'm just trying to get my placement here on this beautiful scripture that says blessed coming in and blessed going out. The whole chapter of Deuteronomy 28 talks about um, God telling the Israelites that if they will be obedient they will have blessings and he talks about all the blessings that they will have. And so one of them is you will be blessed when you come in and you will be blessed when you go out. And so I thought this would be an appropriate scripture to put on our door to remind us we're blessed when we come in and we're blessed when we go out, when we're obedient to God's word. And a lot of people will say, oh, the Old Testament, that was for back then and Jesus came to fulfill the law. But you know what? Nowhere in the New Testament do I read where it said, where Jesus said, don't listen to the Old Testament. It's old, antiquated, and out of date, and you don't have to listen to it anymore. It is vital to understanding the New Testament. So I'm standing on all of God's Word, Old and New Testament, and so I'm going to know that if I'm obedient to God's Word, I'm going to be blessed coming in and blessed going out. So I hope you love this scripture as much as I do. And we're going to take some Big Top by DIY. I really love this as a top coat. It's so easy to apply. It is so satiny smooth. And I'm using this beautiful brush that I got off Sammy's website that's um, from DIY. And I love that I can put nice, wide, even strokes. And it's not taking me forever with a tiny little paintbrush. And these bristles are so smooth. I mean, it is better than a makeup brush. And so I'm going to do a nice th thin even coat all over the whole thing. And I was a little nervous when it started drying because it wasn't drying evenly, but it turned out beautiful. I found the center of this at the top. Um, I left it a little bit, I, I put my words a little bit lower because I knew I wanted to put a little bow or something on top. Now, I got this ribbon at Joann's when they had the spring ribbon on clearance, and I thought, this did not look like spring ribbon to me. This screamed fall all over the place, so I knew I wanted to use it in my fall decor, and so I'm just going to bunch up this little ribbon and poke it behind my bow, and I'm going to do this on both sides because I'm going to make kind of a little bow swag. I don't know what you would call this, but I just decided I liked this look and this is what we're going to do. And at first I thought I was just going to do the ribbon because, oh, there's my, there's another one of those little burlap flowers. I just love them. They're just simple and everything. But 
Um, I decided it was too plain. So I'm going to add a little greenery to it. I'm going to put some of those little eucalyptus picks and some of this other greenery, which I want to say I got at Walmart maybe. Or maybe Michael's when they had it 70% off. I think I may have gotten that at Michael's when it was 70% off. Because I'm not paying full price for anything at Michael's. I'm sorry, Michael's, but your prices are too high and I'm a cheapskate. So there you go. So here is the final product. I hope you're enjoying these fall port DIYs and I hope that you're going to check out that lamp because it's a really nice lamp. I hope that I did it justice and be sure to give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment below and do me a favor. Make sure you're subscribed. My analytics tell me that probably 80% of my viewers are not even subscribed. Really? Y'all hit that subscribe button. It's free. Let's get back to the video. Last but not least, I picked up this wood round Michael's clearance. I ended up paying $4.50 for this 16 inch round and it's very unique and I did not mind paying that for it because it feels like a really nice piece. And so I'm going to just make a line. I didn't care if it was in the middle or not. I just made a line. I'm going to put a little piece of masking tape across it and I'm going to use the weathered wood as a stain for the top half of this. I'm going to just paint it on with a sponge brush and I'm taking a baby wipe and just smearing it all over. So it looks a little watered down. It looks um, like a stain and it's beautiful. It has that um, gray weathered undertone. I love this color. And on the bottom, I, I did the edges as well. Same, same technique. And the bottom I painted with um, yeah, the same color I painted my last project with at Farm Fresh. Farm Fresh by DIY. And I did not get that on camera for some reason. Probably too busy talking with my friend. So I made this stencil with my Cricut as well. We were all about the Cricut that to this day. We were making signs and just having a great old time. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get that hello to lay on my line straight and even. So I decided I'm just going to fold it up to the bottom of those letters and lay it right on there. And hopefully it's on there even. I could kind of hold it up in the light and see that it was on there even. And then I'm just going to take my little scraper and get it on there really good and peel off that tape. And then I'm going to take beadboard by DIY. It's a beautiful white color. And I'm going to use a, nope, first of all, I'm going to put some Mod Podge on it because that is what keeps my paint from bleeding. Everybody has their own stenciling technique, but I like to put a thin layer of Mod Podge on my stencils first. Then we're going to take some beadboard. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves here. And I'm putting it in that little dish over there because we don't want to double dip our DIY paints because they are all natural clay-based paints and they can get bacteria in there they can get stinky they can get whatever sometimes I do just do as I say not as I do uh, but I use my paints up pretty quick um, so I'm doing a little bit of just dabbing using the side of my brush using very little paint on the brush doing two coats if I need to do two coats it dries super fast in, using this method sometimes I swirl it around and sometimes I just dab it sometimes I use the side of the brush um, just being real careful to not use a lot of paint at a time at one time. Now I'm going to peel it off and I like to peel it before it completely dries. That way then none of the paint is drying to my stencil. You're going to see my friend Linda Finger to help me with this project. Thanks Charity. We had a great time crafting this day. Now I'm just going to peel all those extra little pieces out of the uh, stencil and I did have a few little pieces that peeled up but it's not a problem it's to be expected with stenciling sometimes if you're going for a real rustic look you can just sand it a little bit uh, across, gently across the top and it just looks like it's supposed to be that way this one I did not want to do that so I just went in with this tiny little paintbrush and dabbed a little paint on and it was fine 
Now I'm going to take my DIY clear wax and give this a coat of clear wax so that it will be sealed and it will stand the weather out on the front door. I'm not going to put this on my front door. I don't have any way to put this on my front door. My front door has glass and it's tall and the wind would totally blow it off my front door. The wind blows on my front porch like a tornado constantly. I don't know why the wind blows. The wind blows mulch out of our flower beds. We can't keep mulch in the flower beds. It's insane. Then I made another bow out of that same ribbon and just a simple bow. I don't do fancy bows, but and I don't do fancy florals. So I'm just going to poke a few of those leaves in there. And then I had these little um, pumpkins that I got at Dollar Tree that have the clips. And then I decided to heat up that clip with my heat gun. And then I thought it would be smart to touch it. Nope. Let's use the pliers and pull that little hot metal clip out. And then just, I'm going to pull that little plastic um stem out and use a little piece of a real wooden stem a wooden stick to put in there for the stem that was in my stash from some Dollar Tree stems and then I had gotten these at I think these came from Michael no Joann's or Michael's on clearance and I think they were I don't remember how much they were maybe we can zoom in on that little tag over there and see but they were a really good price but I love those little white acorns I say acorn like a southern girl, so don't make fun of me. So I'm going to put the pumpkin on one side, the little acorns on the other. And I think this turned out so cute. I'm wondering if I put another one of those flowers in the middle of this. I'll be surprised if I didn't put a burlap flower in the middle of that one. I, I did cut that wire stem off that top. Oh, no, I did put... Okay, so I took some raffia... And I put some masking tape on the end to keep it all together and then poke those in the sides. Okay, that's it. You guys get up, get to crafting, make some pretty things for your front porch, but mostly remember to be still and know that he is God. <laughs> <laughs>